Good evening, Ad Color Believers. <laughs> On behalf of the American Advertising Federation's board chairman, Frank Cooper, our chief operating officer, Ms. Connie Cannon Frazier, our corporate members, the nation's leading advertisers, agencies, and media companies, our 40,000 professional members spread throughout 200 local AF chapters, and 8,000 student members in our 225 AAF college chapters nationwide. It's an honor to be here in the house that the remarkable Tiffany R. Warren built. <laughs> Indeed, this isn't just a house or a program or an award show. It's a mission and a movement and in five short years, this ad color movement has successfully targeted and focused the commitment and creativity of thousands of advertising professionals. It takes a force of nature to accomplish that. And anyone who's met Tiff knows she is a force of nature. Now, Tiffany knows that I got involved with the AAF as a volunteer many years before I became AAF's president to help build AAF's multicultural initiatives. That's what drew me into volunteer work with the AAF. And so I can tell you that Tiffany R. Warren is one of our, one of my heroes. And many of you have participated in AAF's Mosaic Center initiatives, the Most Promising Minority Students Program, the Mosaic Awards, the Mosaic Career and Vendor Fairs, to name a few, and I thank you very, very much for that. You know that diversity and multiculturalism have been a major AF focus long before the importance of diversity was on the front pages as it is today. It's in our DNA. And so to be here tonight, participating in a weekend celebration of inclusion and presenting the very first Ad Color Lifetime Achievement Awards with our AF corporate member, Diageo, to those who have made legendary contributions to the advertising industry is phenomenal. To present two of these awards to those who were recently inducted into the AF's Advertising Hall of Fame is doubly phenomenal. And I can't help but add what a thrill it will be to watch Tiffany R. Warren herself be inducted into the Advertising Hall of Achievement in New York next week. <laughs> Recogn recognizing what we in this room already know, that she is one of this industry's brightest rising stars. As I said, our board chairman, Frank Cooper, and many other AF members are present tonight. That's the bond between AF and ad color. I cannot tell you how proud we are of that and how much we look forward to continuing this journey together. With Tiffany R. Warren leading the way, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish. Mark, take it away. What's up, everybody? Come on, y'all could do better than that. How y'all doing tonight? Yeah. All right, I got one thing I got to say before. Is Brooklyn in the house? Brooklyn is always in the house. Uh, across the world, celebratory toast has really become the hallmark of many great achievements. Big, small, spanning dreams and diverse people of cultures around the world is really what we're about. With some of the most recognized and iconic brands, Diageo is honored to be part of these celebrated moments every day, everywhere, in more than 180 countries around the globe. In cherishing these special and unique roles, our business is fortunate to play in society. The soul of Diageo is built on the diversity of our people, our vision and honoring a special bond that we celebrate with that people across all geographies and cultures. It is in that spirit of celebration and this philosophy that I stand here before you tonight to say, Tiffany R. Warren, this was a dream that you brought true. And to say to these Lifetime Achievement Award winners, salute. So please, ladies and gentlemen, raise your glass to our Lifetime Achievement Award winners. Salute. All of our Ad Time Lifetime Achievement Award winners sponsored by Diageo and the AAF are humble enough to say that in their careers, they're still kind of work in progress. But you gotta really look at some of the remarkable accomplishments that really set them way, way, way far above the rest. 
Tonight, two of uh, the honorees, Bill Lamar and Roy Eaton, were recently inducted into the Advertising Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, as a former advertising brat and account man by training, we don't get into the Advertising Hall of Fame awards. Frank Mingle was the first. I think now we got three or four. It is an outstanding honor. The third honoree tonight, Mr. Douglas Allegood, is definitely on his way and will surely be there very, very soon. I'm a little shorter than the guys, so. Our first Lifetime Achievement winner is Roy Eaton, the former vice president and music director for Benton and Bowles. Roy Eaton's mother taught him that to overcome prejudice, he had to do 200% to get credit for 100%. That became his mantra. With a natural gift for music and the determination to be a success, no matter what the odds, he kicked off his advertising career at Young and Rubicon by writing 10 TV spots over a weekend, followed by seven related jingles. YNR hired him as a copywriter and composer, and Eaton began a career spanning more than five decades. He joined Benton and Bowles as music director in 1959, where he continued to write memorable campaigns like, can't get enough of that sugar, Chris, sugar, Chris. <laughs> he also pioneered the association of noted artists with commercial brands. In 1980, Eden opened his own production company. Last year, he was inducted into, guess what, the Advertising Hall of Fame. Still, his goal remains the same, to play music and to change the world, busting open assumptions and evolving attitudes to help people of talent reach their full potential within the advertising industry. Congratulations, Roy. Thank you. First, my congratulations to Miss R. Warren uh, for creating this group of 800 and, what was it, 823 people celebrating the diversity that has newly been acquired by our industry. Uh, I was uh, reminiscing about the fact that when I started in the industry in uh, 1955, by the way, I didn't have a prepared remark, but I was very much moved by what uh, Vita had said about her father in 1955, having all the qualifications on paper to become uh, an ad executive and not being able to. And I was very fortunate that I was able to break the color barrier, uh, but it was a very lonely life, as you can imagine. Um, Mad Men is pretty accurate. <laughs> we were invisible. <laughs> But there was an organization that was started uh, in the 60s called GAP. And our first meeting, I think we had eight people of color. And that organization tried to do what now this organization is accomplishing. And that is encouraging African Americans and people of color to use their skills to transform an industry that has been at the control of the perpetuation of the racism that is part of our culture. But I have a challenge to put out to you. I want you to stop selling products. I want you instead to use your talents in the process of selling process, products, rather, to enable people to see the full potential that they possess, regardless of who their identity says they are and who the world says they are. You have the key to transforming and changing, really, really changing the, the value system of this country. A value system based on solely material values is the thing that has brought us to the malaise that we're suffering now. Rather, we have to aspire to use the thing in our blackness that has made us 
a force already in this country through people like Martin Luther King, the force of recognizing an inner source, an inner strength, an inner power out of which everything evolves. And using this comes our creativity, yes, but also using this can come a message to the world that says, yes, you, no matter who you are, are valued, yes, you can achieve anything, yes, you are me. I put that challenge out to you, and I know with your talent and with your ability and with things that I've heard from people like Frank Cooper and others that this is something that you solely, that you totally embrace, and I celebrate looking forward to seeing it realized for our country. Thank you.